North Korea has reported its first death from COVID-19. The news comes a day after the country acknowledged an outbreak of the virus for the first time in this worldwide crisis, ordering a lockdown. The state media says six people have died from a fever that's been spreading fast nationwide. It's confirmed one of them had tested positive for the coronavirus Omicron variant. It's also released this photo of leader Kim Jong-un at the emergency epidemic prevention headquarters. The country had previously claimed to have had zero infections during the pandemic. It's refused international help with vaccinations and has kept its borders closed. Well, I'm joined by correspondent Josh Smith in Seoul, South Korea. Uh, not so far from this very secretive nation, but uh, tell us a bit more about what's going on or, or what you can tell us, considering that officially COVID is now starting to take its toll in North Korea, about two and a half years into this pandemic. That's right. It is quite a startling admission by the government there. Uh, there had long been suspicions that there, uh, that it was unlikely that North Korea uh, would entirely escape this uh, global pandemic. And now we have the first official confirmation from the government that there are indeed cases there. As you mentioned, though, even the, the death numbers that they've released so far uh, do show uh, the, the amount of confusion uh, uh, over exactly what's going on there. This kind of unknown fever that they say um, has uh, uh, infected at least 350,000 people so far just in recent weeks. Um, but they haven't released total COVID uh, case numbers. Um, and experts we talked to uh, said that that shows uh, perhaps a, a weakness in, in their capabilities and able to uh, test the sheer number of people with symptoms uh, there right now. Uh, and so I think uh, going forward, there's going to continue to be questions over uh, not only uh, the numbers, but also uh, their capability in being able to uh, help people and prevent uh, widespread deaths. Josh, just how bad do you think this outbreak could get considering such a, a poor health care system, no vaccines and sanctions on top of that? So North Korea uh, has a, a relatively high number of educated uh, doctors and staff and, and, a, and a healthcare system that, given its uh, you know authoritarian nature of the, the government, can be very quickly mobilized and deployed around the country. However, they have chronic shortages of, of supplies, uh, medicines, equipment, all of that, um, which is why experts say that it's so critical that they do open their doors uh, to some aid. Now, in recent months, uh, there has been a trickle of aid, uh, we understand, that's come in from some of international uh, organizations there um, uh, going through that very tight border lockdown that you uh, mentioned before. However, there's been no sign of, of vaccines, uh, which have been key to keeping at least the, the death rates lower around the world and are seen as key to allowing uh, North Korea to eventually uh, open up and, and protect its already uh, battered economy. Do you think North Korea will eventually have to open up and in effect open itself to uh, outside scrutiny? Uh, there are uh, some observers who uh, looked at, at this kind of uh, uh, rather unprecedented uh, state media coverage of um, this first outbreak as a possible sign that North Korea is moving towards that, that they're getting ready to uh, potentially accept some of this aid. Um, uh, they've already uh, uh, opened their borders slightly relative to what they had before, again, in, a, in a, an apparent, uh, apparent uh, acknowledgement that they do need to ease some of the controls that they have had there. Um, and so there is an optimistic view that hopefully they are uh, now, with the scale of this spread, uh, going to open up to some of that aid that will allow them to uh, live with COVID uh, as the rest of the world is. Journalist Josh Smith in Seoul, South Korea. Thank you very much.